Hi, I'm Kate Eggleston. I'm going to be your art teacher today. Welcome to the Mammoth Museum's virtual summer camp art class. Today's project is a reimagining of Rene Magritte's famous painting, The Son of Man. René Magritte is a Belgian artist who is famous for his surrealist paintings. Surrealism is an art movement that describes a strange combination of objects and artwork that can be funny, surprising, or frightening when all rolled into the same piece. The painting we are learning about today is called The Son of Man, which was created in 1964. It's a self-portrait of Rene Magritte himself with an apple over his face, wearing a bowler hat, and dressed in a very fine suit and red tie. Rene Magritte often painted while wearing suits. He liked to be properly dressed when creating art. So let's begin by drawing our image that we're going to be painting. First things first, we should establish where the parts of the body are on the page. Now from the original, there's a lot of background and then the figure in the center is a little bit smaller. It does not take up the whole page. So I feel like getting the face situated first is the best part. So generally speaking, the face comes up looking like an oval, and I'll draw mine just a little bit darker so that you can see. An oval, kind of like an egg. Okay, now when we are drawing to then paint over top, it's important to remember to sketch lightly if you possibly can, so that way you can erase if you need to. So I'm going to draw a little bit of the neck. Okay, I then need to establish where the shoulders are on this person so that way it will measure out correctly. So it looks like the person's shoulders kind of swoop down a little bit because the suit makes him look, makes this person look a little bit more muscular. Okay, so shoulders generally tend to swoop down and then go down towards the arms, okay? And you can see all these little sketchy lines that I'm making. What this is doing is it's allowing me to create a non-permanent guide for how this should look. I'm gonna sketch down just a little bit more, okay? I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom just so we know how much space he makes up, okay? Okay, now that we have the head, the neck, and the body situated, I think there's one other little thing I need to do. I think I made the neck way too short. This is why we have pencils. So that way we can erase and fix things. So I'm just going to fix this a little bit. And then I can erase all my little mistakes. So that way everything looks Correct. Okay, much better. So what we're going to concentrate on first is the suit itself. So the suit is a little complicated when you look at it from a picture perspective, but to draw it is actually fairly simple. So the first things first, we need to establish where the collar finishes up around his neck. And it's this little line that swoops underneath the chin to go around the neck. And if you draw a slightly curved line, the great thing is that that will give it a sense of volume and give it a more 3D look, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and draw the part of the suit that attaches to the collar. I think it goes out just a little bit more. We're gonna establish this collar, which again swoops out, stops in the center of the body right here right about where his chest would be, okay? So here's the suit, coat, okay. So the, here's the neckline. So inside this little suit coat area, you have the collar of the shirt, which 
comes down kind of like a little triangle. And then you have the other side. Okay. Now, the other thing that is great is that the tie actually covers up the buttons on the shirt, so you don't even have to draw those. As an artist, I really appreciate it when certain things are hidden, and then you don't have to draw them. Okay, so we're going to make this tie come down and meet towards the bottom. Fabulous! Now you have a tie. Okay, so once we have the tie established, I feel like we should do the lapels on the coat next, and then that will fall into place with the buttons and the line on the side of the jacket. So the way the lapel is drawn is that the collar, part of it comes down a little bit, there's a little notch about here. If you're familiar with men's suits, you'll see this is a very common shape. Then we need to go to the other side and draw the other lapel, give it a little notch. Okay, and we're gonna draw down again. Now, this side of the lapel overlaps this side, so this one is gonna have a line that continues down, goes all the way down to the bottom of the coat, and this is about the center of his body. Okay, and then it curves down just a little bit, okay? I think the lapel comes out just a little bit more at the bottom than it does the top, but you know what? It's an artistic interpretation and we're not going to worry about being perfect. We're using our own ideas about how this should look. So we have lapel, lapel, tie, collar, and it has two buttons on the coat. You may add as many buttons as you like. I am adding two so that I'm a little closer to the details of the painting. Now. We have the coat drawn, we have the buttons, we have the lapel, the tie, everything else is here. We need to establish where his arms are. So I drew this purposefully very large, but we're going to go back and establish where the sleeves are on either side and then where the hand should be in the painting because the hand just skirts the bottom. So we're going to take our pencils and draw a space here to indicate where the sleeve attaches to the suit. It dips in just a little bit. And I think the hand probably falls about here. Again, do a curved line at the bottom of the sleeve and that will help indicate that there is volume to that sleeve. Now, because this one's already here, we can establish that the one on the other side is at the same spot. So if you look from here to here, it's about there. So again, we're going to draw the sleeve and it dips in to form the shape of the coat. This arm is slightly behind the other one, but we're going to just draw it as best that we can and draw the line of the coat. Now, I'm going to erase the line there. Okay, now we have two sleeves and now we need to draw the hands. Hands are tricky. I know a lot of artists do not like to draw hands. You can really get away with this looking like a mitten if that's the easiest way to do it. So do not be dissuaded just because it's a hand. Just do the very best that you can. So this hand is partially clenched. You see a thumbnail and there's some lines in the hand which you can add or don't have to add. It's totally up to you. The other one is partially hidden by the coat. So we're going to draw just a little sneak peek of that one. Don't have to get too detailed. Okay, so now you have all of these features and we are ready to move on to the next. Okay, now we get to go to the fun part, which is establishing the features of the face that are visible behind the apple, the hat, and that's it. So let's get going. So one thing's very clear is that you can see the ears. So I'm going to add the ears. I'm actually going to pretend like this is me. So I am going to do a self-portrait slightly. So here's my ears. I have my slightly larger ears and they stick out a little bit. So we're just going to go that way. 
Um, you cannot see the person's mouth, but you can see a little bit of the eye peeking behind the fruit, but let's do the fruit first and then go back and add those things in as necessary. So I think that I would like to stick with an apple. So an apple is a roundish object with a couple of differences. Generally speaking, an apple looks kind of like a rounded out heart. If you get like a super nice one from the grocery store. Okay, so we're gonna make a slightly rounded apple. It has a little dip at the top, round it out, little dip at the bottom. And then that's pretty much how an apple looks. Now I'm gonna add some leaves because why not? Renee Magritte added leaves. Let's get fancy with this. So the leaves are like little diamond shapes and you can add some lines to them. I'm gonna add three just to make it even all the way through. Okay, so we have my apple, we have the leaves. Fabulous. Now, what we're gonna do is work on the hat. You can draw any hat that you like. I'm gonna draw a bowler hat because it's just very classic to the painting and I really enjoy it. So a bowler hat has a large domed top. Kind of looks like you're wearing a bowling ball on your head. It might be a little tall, but we'll figure it out. And then there is a brim to the hat that goes up and around this way. So a little bit of that brim is obscured behind the leaves, but that's okay. Okay. Again, if this is too much detail, don't worry. I'm just sketching it all in in case you're interested in doing it. I'm gonna add a little line across the bowler hat and there we go, hat. Now, because I am going to use this as slightly as a self-portrait, I'm gonna add lots and lots of curly hair. So you can add hair to yours, you don't have to. My hair is going crazy with the humidity, so you add whatever you like. You can make them bald, you can make the person just the same as the picture, no big deal. So I have lots and lots of curls because my hair is bananas right now. Okay, so now we have our hat, our fruit, our features. Oh, and we have a little bit of eye peeking out on one side, so I'm gonna do just a tiny little bit. Not too much. Okay, and maybe a little bit of an eyebrow. Great, that's looking pretty good. Now last, we have to work on the background. So the background largely is the wall, a little bit of ocean, and kind of a stormy sky. So let's establish where the wall is. It's just a brick wall, very simple. So let's make a line and make sure that connects all the way to the other side. And as even as possible, if you have a ruler and you wanna use it, great. If not, no worries. Now this has brick in it. So we're gonna make a very simple brick wall. We're not gonna make ourselves crazy. Okay, and they're large bricks. So they go down like this and bricks usually have pattern just like this. Now, if you wanna get really fancy and make this a 3D brick wall, here's how we're gonna make that work. The two lines that are here, you're going to do a line on a slight angle and connect it. And this will give the brick wall a 3D looking effect which is very nice. Okay, so then the background is mostly ocean and sky. For the ocean, what I'll do is I'll just establish a very small line, light line right here, because that's where the ocean's gonna be. Okay, all right, great. So we have all of our features ready to go. I think that we're ready to paint. Okay, so for now we're gonna set aside our pencil because we don't need it. We are now into the part where we need our watercolor pencils, our little dish of water, and our watercolor brush. Now these watercolor pencils, like I mentioned before, have pigments inside the pencil casings. So essentially you're going to be coloring with dry paint and then adding water after. With watercolor pencils you can also start wet but for this, we're gonna start dry and then add the water as we go. So let's establish a couple of things first. I'm going to keep 
the colors from the original painting for the most part. So I'm gonna start with the tie, because why not? Let's start with a little pop of red, okay? So you're gonna take your colored pencil, watercolor pencil, and you're gonna color in that spot. Now, depending on how dark you want it, you can either color the area darker or lighter, so that way you will get very defined colors for each of these areas. So you might have to press down a little bit harder just to really get the color in there because you want that tie to pop. If you want your tie to be orange or green or something else instead, go for it. So I've got my tie colored, okay, using my red. I'm gonna do the apple next. Now the apple is different shades of green. So we're gonna start light and then we're gonna go dark. Now on the apple, a great way to make it look more 3D is to add a shine spot. A shine spot means that you have light reflected off the apple. Usually what I do is I make a little white circle and then I don't color inside that circle so that way I can establish exactly where the light is hitting it. Okay, I've got my light green going. Now I'm gonna use my dark green. Now the dark green is gonna be used to create shadows along that edge. So we're gonna shade it in just a little bit around the edge here. So that way when we paint it, it will look a little darker around that edge and give it a 3D effect. Okay, um, I'm gonna do the leaves in a very light coloring of dark green here. Now sometimes the color doesn't always come out exactly how you like, so after your painting's dry, you can always go back and fix what you wanna fix. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so the sky. I have a uh, violet, I have a regular blue, and then I have a light blue. I think we should start with the light blue and then get darker if we need to. So right down here, we established where the ocean was gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just color that in light blue on both sides, okay. And then I'm gonna go back and add just a little bit of dark blue towards the bottom. Okay, great. Now, the sky itself. So the sky in the painting has some blotchy clouds here and there. So what I would suggest is, instead of painting the entire thing blue, just add some blue patches and then you can push that color around with your brush. So I'm gonna add little patches of blue here and there because when we add the water this will all liquefy and then we can just move the color around as we need it. It's also kind of a stormy sky so I'm gonna add just a little bit of black 
in there so we can get some gray going. Not too much. And don't feel, be afraid to leave white spaces in the sky because the sky has clouds too. Okay, this looks pretty good. I think we're done with our coloring and we are ready to paint. Okay, so the sky. I have a uh, violet, I have a regular blue, and then I have a light blue. I think we should start with the light blue and then get darker if we need to. So right down here we established where the ocean was going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just color that in light blue on both sides. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and add just a little bit of dark blue towards the bottom. Okay, great. Now, the sky itself. So the sky in the painting has some blotchy clouds here and there. So what I would suggest is instead of painting the entire thing blue, just add some blue patches and then you can push that color around with your brush. So I'm going to add little patches of blue here and there because when we add the water this will all liquefy and then we can just move the color around as we need it. It's also kind of a stormy sky so I'm going to add just a little bit of black in there so we can get some gray going. Not too much. And don't feel, be afraid to leave white spaces in the sky because the sky has clouds too. Okay, this looks pretty good. I think we're done with our coloring and we are ready to paint. Okay, so when we paint, the idea is that we use a little bit of water on our brush. So you dip your water brush in your water, you wipe off the extra droplets on the side of the dish because that will get the extra water out and it will also make your paintbrush into a nice wide tip. So I'm going to start with the tie. You're going to add just a little bit of water here and there and this is going to liquefy the pigment. You're going to try to stay in the lines just like you would if you were coloring. And if it's harder to drag the paintbrush across the paint, that usually means your brush is not wet enough and you need just a little bit more water. We do not want to bog this down with too much water because then your colors will start to bleed. Great. Now, if I switch to another color, I need to rinse out my brush first. So you wiggle it around in your water, scrape off the edge, and then you can continue. So if you see, this got really, really bright, which is fabulous. Now, the apple itself, so it's lighter in the center and dark along the edges. You always want to work from light to dark when doing watercolors or most types of artwork, actually. So I'm going to use my brush to move the water around. As you can see, as I get to the edge of this apple, that's when that dark green pops out because that's where I colored it. Now you have a more 3D looking apple. There we go, perfect. Now I need to get a little bit more water. I need to reset my brush into a little tip. If you can't get it with the edge of the cup, you can always use your fingers. And it's just a little bit of water, it'll wipe off, no problem. Just don't take your fingers and touch your painting when they're wet. So I'm gonna do the leaves next because the hat is going to be very tricky. We need to get around those leaves. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and tackle the hat. Okay, a little bit of water. So I'm gonna start here. And I'm just gonna go around those leaves. Having the dark color next to those leaves will actually help highlight them and make them pop out a little bit more, which is a good thing. Okay, I'm gonna go around. I'm just gonna wiggle my brush back and forth here, no problem. Okay, you paint. This is wonderful because you can paint just like you draw. Just need to hold it like a pencil and go for it. You can use a little brush or a big brush. You just need a brush that holds a little bit of water. Perfect. 